Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last leaving whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight For the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rock, the rock is red glare The bumpers stinging in What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Hum Baby Baseball Channel. And today, we're going extra innings. It's time for the top of the 10th inning for the Ken Burns documentary. We're going into the 90s, and we're going to cover all the craziness of the 90s, an era that a lot of us actually lived through. So this is going to be really interesting stuff, stuff that we remember, stuff that we went through, and it was absolutely insane. So I can't wait to get into this and talk about it. I'm going to send it over to ball cap sports and let him go ahead and do the introduction here and let's get into this top of the 10th inning thank you eric i am excited to get into this because yes like you said this is now stuff we lived through uh so this is this is fun there's some actual memories on this uh not just recollection not just going off what other people said so let's dive into it top of the 10th first off released september 28th 2010 16 years after the initial nine innings were released Pick it up. We got a new storyteller. John Chancellor was our narrator for the first nine innings. He passed away in 1996. So for inning 10, we have Keith David. Comment below. Let us know. How do you think Keith David did for this? He had some pretty big shoes to fill. As for the content, starts out with the 92 NLCS between the Braves and the Pirates. We get our introduction to Barry Bonds. He was the left fielder for the Pirates who was unable to just barely not throw out Sid Bream. And the Braves went on to the World Series, become the team of the 90s, and Barry Bonds plays his last game, has his last moments with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Played 1,000 games in Pittsburgh, won two MVPs, hit 176 homers, and stole 251 bases. But in 93, he would join the San Francisco Giants, Eric's team, the team his father, Bobby Bonds, was most known for. In the Bay Area, Barry would play nearly 2,000 games, accumulate just under 2,000 hits, hit 586 home runs, become the all-time home run king with 762. And in 2001, would set the single-season home run mark of 73. He also won four straight MVPs from 01 to 04. He was dominating, and his career has become one of the most fascinating careers to look back on. But dark clouds, unfortunately, are the focus of this inning. We got the Albert Bell situation with the cork bat that Jason Grimsley went Mission Impossible on to get back. You got Jose Canseco, Mark McGuire, Barry Bonds, and the steroid era on full display. And additionally, baseball added insult to injury in 94 when a strike canceled the season. In 1994, the Expos were the best team in baseball. Matt Williams was making a run at 61 homers. Tony Gwynn was making a run at 400. But the CBA was set to expire during the season. And on August 12th, the players walked out. There would be no 61 or 400 or Expos playoff run. And this was back when 61 was a sacred number. The strike would last until the 95 season was set to begin and replacement players were getting ready to start the season. That was until federal judge Sonia Sotomayor ruled that the owners had been negotiating in bad faith. The players agreed to go back 
under the previous agreement, but the damage with the fans was still raw and attendance was down 20%. Baseball was in a dark place until Cal. If he could make it through the season without missing a game, Cal Ripken would break Lou Gehrig's consecutive game streak of 2130. And on September 6, 1995, Cal Ripken indeed passes Lou Gehrig, and he would keep going until 2632, at which he finally took a day off. We also meet the Braves and their trio of starters, Maddox, Smoltz, and Gladwin, who would help them to become the team of the 90s. In the 90s, Yankees led by Jeter, Birdie, Pettit, the core four, plus some veterans, Cone, O'Neill, Tino Martinez, Jimmy Key, Wade Boggs, and their skipper, Joe Torre, would win the World Series in 96, and the core four would go on to win the 98, the 99, and the 2000 World Series. Towards <laughs> the end of the 90s, there seemed to be a constant run on Roger Maris's single season record of 61 home runs. Most thought there were two that could do it, Ken Griffey Jr. or Mark McGuire. And this brings us to the 1998 season. By the end of April, Griffey and McGuire had 11 homers each. McGuire went crazy in May and finished the month with 27 home runs. And as Griffey started to fade with just eight in May, Sammy Sosa started to make noise. Six homers in April, seven in May, but 20 in June. Sosa and McGuire were on. Griffey would hit 56 that season, which was good enough for the AL mark that year. It was during that season that the Andrew Steen Dion story broke. McGuire had it just sitting there in his locker room. Didn't care. At the time, sold over the counter. Even Bud Selig went to his local CVS to see if he could pick some up. Fans, however, moved on. Didn't care. The focus was back on the home run chase. McGuire had 60, heading into a two-game set between the Cardinals and Cubs. Of course, the Cardinals and Cubs. And on September 7th, McGuire hit number 61 with Sosa there to watch it from the outfield. On September 8th, against the Cubs, again, McGuire hit a laser for number 62. McGuire did it in 145 games. Ruth did it in 151. So, something there. But, McGuire and Sosa were tied at 65 heading into the final week of the season. McGuire was doubling back down on his Andro regimen and hit five homers that last weekend. Wanted to make sure he could beat Sammy. Back-to-back two-homer games to finish it up and hit a homer in his final at-bat. Sosa finished with 66 and won the MVP. That same season, Barry Bonds hit just 37 home runs. So nobody was focused on him when he became the first to hit 400 homers and steal 400 bases. Barry had new motivation to become the best and claim the spotlight. And he was going to do whatever it took. So that is our top of the 10th. There's a lot happening there, Eric. Give me give me your thoughts. I'm going to catch a breath here. That's a crazy top of the 10th. So much going on. I mean, they're catching up from 18 years of, of, of you know, since inning nine. A lot happening here. Give me your give me your first initial thoughts. Yeah, like you said, it's an absolutely insane decade. And it was pretty much the, I mean, I was alive in the 80s, but the 90s was my first full decade as a baseball fan. I was born in 1980. So didn't really, you know, get a full decade in until the 90s. And yeah, the strike, the steroid thing, which at that time I was in total denial. I was like, steroids don't help you hit a baseball. Come on. Steroids as a football thing, you know, right, you got to right. have the talent. But at that time we didn't know, obviously, you know, in hindsight, obviously it helps a lot, but, uh, you know, yeah, it was just insane. Um, that home run race was crazy. The Yankees, um, and I'm not a Yankees fan, but at that time it was pretty cool to see uh, the Yankees finally win a World Series. People forget they sucked for a long time in the yeah, 80s, 90s. You know, it took them a while. Um, you know, they're, they uh, finally got it together. Joe Torre, who managed and played forever, never won a World Series, never got to a World Series. That was really dramatic. Just uh, so many great moments. But also, yeah, the strike. That's really what I think of. That's the main thing. And, you know, so many fans pissed off. And we'll talk. I'm sure we'll get more into that. But just insane. I don't know what to say. Yeah, getting back to the strike, I mean, it was – it really was a, a heartbreaking moment for baseball fans. You know, you had so much going on that year. Um, every time there was a, a run for – I mean, players didn't have to even be close to 61. 
They just had to, by the All-Star break, be projected to get close, and the media attention would go through the roof. And that year, it was Matt Williams, and everybody was convinced he was going to do it. Now, he might have gone out and you know been hit by a pitch and broken his wrist a week later and, and yeah. not got close, but just the fact that he didn't have the opportunity, that was – a heartbreaking situation. I remember being a young baseball fan. I was I was in my teens then, and I was just so disappointed by the players. Didn't really have an understanding of, of how baseball really worked, the inner workings of it, the owners. All I knew was that the players weren't out there playing, and it really, like, just – it was so disappointing and, and that, that it lasted for so long. And the way they did it, too, I remember, they kind of dragged it out. They didn't cancel the season right away. They, they no. took some time to cancel the season, so they dragged it out. You kept thinking, can they come back? Can they come back? And at that time of year, August, football wasn't the machine it is today. So Sports Center wasn't headlined by you know the, 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 the training camps and, and, the, and a preseason game. It was headlined by baseball. So that was always the top story. It was front and center. They were dragging it out. That strike was just brutal. And then when they had the replacement players out there in spring training, yep. it was just like, this is never going to end. It was so <laughs> rough. That was such a, a tough one to to get through there, a tough one to get through in the early 90s. And I, you know, they learned from that. You know, we haven't had a, a serious work stoppage in baseball uh, since then. They've, they've had CBAs come up and they've been able to work it out because they know what the ramifications are, right? That, you know, they, they play baseball. This is still in their memory. They play baseball in 2020 because they still know what happens if you don't, yeah. if you give, if you make it look like you're giving up, if you're being greedy, if you're putting the dollar that's in your pocket above the dollar that the fan is consuming or spending. You turn the fan off. That they, that's I'm sure one of the reasons they played baseball is 94. You don't you can't turn your back on the season and the and the fans. Yeah, it's still recent enough. I'm I'm worried about the future. You know, as new generations come, hopefully this yeah. never happens again because I couldn't believe it. I didn't think it was going to happen. I said, "There's no way." I could not picture not having a World Series, and it right. actually happened and to this day. There's no champion in '94. It's vacant. That's just absolutely – even 2020, as crazy as 2020 is, we got a world champion. We had a right. season. Right. So, in a way, 2020, as far as baseball goes, was more of a success than 94. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's just crazy. So much of this is about Barry Bonds and being a Giants fan. I'd be remiss if we didn't touch on Barry Bonds for a minute here. So, I have a question for you. If Barry had hit 73 home runs – in 2001 would there be as much hate is it because i mean listen the the, the record was already you know uh, you know in a cartoonish way broken by mark mcguire yeah um but bonds then went over and beyond that because i was looking you know in prep for this i was looking at barry bonds and i was looking at his seasonal numbers his home runs and everything and look we know we, we know what he did but when you look at his numbers, it's not like if you take 73 out, if you take 73 out and that's 45, his numbers are similar to, you know, just other greats in, in, in the history yeah. of baseball that, that were able to hit 40 home runs regularly. Do you think if he doesn't hit 73, if he doesn't, be, if he doesn't surpass Hank Aaron, is he as hated or is it because he took the mantle from them that that's, you know, the baseball fans feel betrayed? What do you, what are your thoughts on Barry yeah. and, and, and all that? No, he wouldn't be – I think he wouldn't be as hated, but he's hated a lot because he's just hated because he's not the yeah. nicest guy, you know, with the media and with the fans True. and everything. He's not the nicest guy. So it's easy, I could imagine, for non-Giants fans to not like him. I'm a Giants fan, so we love Barry Bonds, but I could right. definitely imagine non-Giants fans uh, hating Barry Bonds because he's kind of easy to hate um, because he's kind of a jerk so, a lot of times. So um, he, he's moody. He's uh, – not polite all the time. He can be polite when he wants to be. People don't like him. But yeah. um, I, you know, of course, um, if he didn't break those records, I think, yeah, people would be more forgiving. Um, but I don't know. I can't say he'd be in the Hall of Fame because no one else is, you know, with steroids is getting in either, other than I think there are steroid users in, but that hasn't been proven. As far as like proven guys, there none of them are getting in that I know of. So so we're gonna we're gonna break some news here. I know of a Hall of Famer 
who has steroids. And I have done investigative reporting on this because in this inning, Thomas Boswell, reporter for the Washington Post, is being interviewed, talking with a major leaguer who's now in the Hall of Fame, who was drinking a Jose Canseco milkshake. That was the quote, Jose Canseco milkshake. And that year, that Hall of Famer hit more homers than any other year. He didn't say who, so he's protecting him, right? But here's the problem. Thomas Boswell, you can look it up. up. Thomas Boswell (laughs) was with the Washington Post. So who's he going to be covering? He's going to, at this point, we're looking at 86 to 91 because we got to be talking about the Jose Canseco peak, that era, when Jose's, uh, you know, really, really starting to mash, right? Yeah. So who would the Orioles, he's, he's going to be covering the Orioles. Who are the Orioles playing primarily at that period? They're going to be American League teams, more so American League East teams. So we're looking at Boston. We're looking at New York. We're looking at Baltimore. We're looking at Toronto. So I'm looking at, so all you got to do is now, okay, go back and look at who the Hall of Famers were. So this was recorded in 2010. So it doesn't count anybody who's gone into the Hall of Fame after 2010. So we're looking at anybody who was really elected into the Hall of Fame between the late 90s, 98, 99, and 2009. You know, give give get to give Ken some time to edit this thing. There's about a 10 year stretch. So here are the guys who are inducted in the Hall of Fame that are American League players only, because there would not be National League players. He's not going to be sitting around talking with National League players. Mm-hmm. You got Fisk, Puckett, Ripkin, and when I did this, like please don't let it be Cal or Wade Box. So I go back and I start looking over the careers. Like okay. Who hit more home runs in that 86 to 91 period than ever before? And ever before that or ever after that? Puckett in 86 hit 31 homers. But from 88 to 95, he kind of was in that 20 range. So you know what? I'll give you a spike. And the same thing with Cal. Cal hit 34 in 91. But from 82 to 87, he routinely hit 25 to 28. So again, a spike. I'll give him that. Um, Fisk played until he was 45 and was hitting, you know, uh, he hit 37 homers at the age of 37. That was in 1985 though. So that's before the period that we're looking at. Do you know who mm-hmm. was right in the, in, right? A bullseye in this period, Wade Boggs. <laughs> Wade really? Boggs is in the hall of fame and he used steroids. Boom. In 1987, <laughs> Wade Boggs hit 24 home runs. No other time in his career did he hit more than 10. Wade Boggs used steroids for a period of his career. So why did he, but he stopped apparently. He stopped, but he still used. We don't, so, but here's, because here's the thing. So then you get, so then the argument would be, well, when, when, when Wade Boggs wasn't using steroids, he was a Hall of Famer. So was Barry Bonds. Boom, done. Barry Bonds yeah. had the 400 homers and the 400 steals. Nobody had ever done it. And as far as everyone could tell, it was after that 98 season that the steroids really got into his head and he started to use it. That's when his body started to balloon. That's when everything went south <laughs> for him <laughs> in terms of the integrity of the game because he saw what was going on with McGuire and Sosa because they were both juicing. Wade Boggs, you have a hall, you have at least one guy in the Hall of Fame who has been using steroids, it is Wade Boggs. Um, So you start, now now you open up the whole Pandora's box of, because this is what they're trying to do. They're trying to keep everybody with that cloud out of the whole thing. Because then once you let one in, you got to let everybody in. That's the the slippery slope here. Wade Boggs, go back and look at his career. He he was a six, seven home run a year guy. And then all of a sudden, He popped up. He hit 24 home runs in 1987. No other time in his career did he hit more than 10. So how long was he using steroids for or or using a Jose Canseco milkshake? Who knows? But it was enough to alter that season. And um, that's my case here is that, you know, we (laughs) we don't we don't know who's in there. Um, I'm starting to get to the point where there are guys in there. And yeah. We just don't know how many. We don't know for how long. 
but from the information with Thomas Boswell saying he was talking to a Hall of Famer who was doing a Jose Canseco milkshake and had the biggest home run spike of his career, it was Wade Boggs. Now, all of this is alleged, This is, but this is me alleging it. Um, there is enough information out there. So you got to think, listen, eventually we're going to have to break down and just – we have to figure yeah. something out. I think eventually we're going to have to break down – I have up until maybe a year or two ago, I've been like, no, don't want any steroid user in. But the problem is there's an era. So many of them were doing it. Um, if the player was somebody like a Barry Bonds, uh, you know what? If he gets elected this year, I'm okay with it. That's my Wade Box story. That's my investigative reporting <laughs> on, on steroids. No, yeah, there's, I thought you were going to say there's at least four guys that I highly suspect and that, I, and uh, I'll even say, I think Mike Piazza, I'm not going to, I'm not saying I know or, or don't know, yeah. but Mike Piazza is highly suspected and there's some evidence there. Um, not Biggio, Biggio maybe, but uh, Bagwell um, also, and uh, Rodriguez, Ivan, uh, Yvonne Rodriguez, who played with Canseco in Texas. So Pudge was yeah. a guy who was, you know, 10, 16, 12, 19, and then all of a sudden, 35, 27, 25, and then it went back down. He won the year he won the MVP in Texas. He had 35 homers. There's there's something there. You had Juan Gonzalez there. You had Rafael Palmero there. Yeah. Come on. I know. Come it, on. So so this and, is the point. It's like what, if, not... if, if they're in, yeah. Let's just, let's just get this over with. Let's stop having this conversation. And I got another, I got a question. It's barely related, but what happens if someone who's already in Starts gambling on baseball and gets caught betting on the game. Do See, they, I thought about that. Here's do they the get thing. taken out? <laughs> Nobody has been taken out of the Hall of Fame, right? Yeah. So I think, I think, either let either let Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens and and Manny Ramirez in, or take guys out yeah. when there is evidence or when there is suspicion. I mean, we kind of. We kind of move on from it, and nobody looks back at what Wade Boggs did. Um, but it's out there, and I think you know there should be you know, take take guy take a guy out. Or Kurt, that's, all, that's the first I've heard Wade Boggs mentioned with as yep. far as steroids go. So I don't, I didn't even know that that was yeah. out there. It's the it it is there. It is so glaring. <laughs> it's <laughs> ridiculous when you look back at his career numbers and you see that home run spike. You're like, what the heck? Was happening there, and what the heck was happening? Brady there? Anderson, kind of <laughs> right? Brady Anderson, um, <laughs> you know. And listen, you know, to, to the viewers here, like, look, we, we don't mean to go down this tangent, but that's what so much of this inning was. So much of this inning was about cheating and steroids and McGuire and Sosa and that whole thing that it's kind of hard to not kind of go down this uh, this 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 rabbit hole, this wormhole for a minute um, because you know okay. it's it's one of the biggest. Uh, I, has it taken over uh, sort of the, the conversation, you know, should a steroid player be in the hall of fame? I feel like that conversation has taken over the whole, the conversation of will somebody hit 61? That, yeah. that Everybody talked about that every year is yeah. who's going to hit, who's going to make a run at 61 this year. It was so captivating. It sucks that that gone and that there's now you get a generation of, of fans that, 61 is irrelevant to them. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 that's, I hate that. Um, but you kind of have a situation where that was the conversation every year heading into I think if season. If someone starts to get close, maybe it'll get revitalized if someone starts getting 57, 58, you know. I hope. But, uh, I hope. It's just, yeah, it's 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 something. Um, uh, another defense of Bonds is, you know, he he uh, he was, um, by all accounts and, and, and appearances, was not uh, doing steroids throughout the 90s and uh, right. watching. Uh, you got to, I mean, you got to understand a guy that competitive who actually wants to be the best and wants to be known as the best, watching these guys, Maguire and Sosa, hitting bombs all over the news, all over the papers. He's hitting his 400 uh, home run, 400 steals. Nobody cares. Nobody's right. there. Nobody's talking about it. No media. He's got to be like, you got to be kidding me. Give yeah. me some of that stuff. Yep. That's it. That was it. <laughs> so it. You had to do it to keep up because if you yeah. didn't do it, you might be out of the yeah. game. And now, that's he probably why wouldn't have been out, but 
he right, wasn't right. he wasn't getting the right attention and there were guys who would have been out and I, and I definitely I would have I know I would have if I was hanging on to AAA and yeah. making you know you know making a, a 20,000 a year and I got a chance to to make millions I'm uh, yeah I might do it <laughs> come on think about it this way like there are guys who have their careers have uh their numbers look puny now because of the steroid era guys like Lou Whitaker yeah. Um, Alan Trammell, who's, who's, who, who, you know, is getting in, got in. Um, but their numbers when they retired were hall of fame numbers. But the problem was between when they retired and, and four years later, their numbers started to look small yeah. and you know, they weren't first ballot guys, but they're somebody who probably would have gotten on in their fifth or sixth or seventh year. Problem is then you have a 10 year gap from when they retired and the steroid era happens. And then all of a sudden, what they did looks tiny. No so there are guys who have been held out of the Hall of Fame because now the all of a sudden the the benchmark was raised, yeah. which is unfair to them. So can, you, just as there are guys who have been held out of in the Hall of Fame, there are guys who didn't get their shot in the big leagues or fell out of the big leagues because they decided that they weren't going to do steroids. We don't know them, and yeah. those those are names in the dark. Like there is. There is a documentary that somebody should do. Maybe it'll be me in 10 years. But there are names and faces in the dark that either got run out of baseball because they didn't do steroids or, uh, you know, never got up there because they decided that they weren't going to do it. They were going to try to get there on their own talent and they missed out on getting a spot because Rafael Paramero took steroids until he was 40. And he didn't get a shot to play first base for the Orioles or wherever Raphael Palmero was at that point. There are guys that missed out. So this whole thing, let me ask you this, that when that juiced book came out, because that's really like, that's, you had the whole, you know, Androstein Dion, right? That really, people were like, what, what's this? But we forgot about it. And we kind of forgot about it until Conseco released that book juiced. Did you ever read that? What were your thoughts on when that happened? Because when that happened, I was like, oh my God, this is, this is, this is, this is real. This is going to change. This is going to change things. Yeah. 2005, I think it came. If I'm not mistaken, I I have the book. I got two copies because my first one wore out because I read (laughs) it so much. I read read that book. Um, It's it's good. And I got his follow. He wrote a second book, Vindicated. um, And I got that one as well. Yep. And um, yeah, absolutely. And my thoughts are just, uh, yeah. Because at the time, like, yeah, nobody really believed it or was talking about it. And uh, we should have, it should have been obvious for McGuire. uh, I always knew McGuire was a beast. I was like, if this dude can stay healthy, he's going to hit 60. 70 oh and i never thought about steroids i was like this dude is just a freaking beast yep. um but not you know so if it would have just been mcguire that would have been one thing but the fact that you know so so who's this guy these all these guys are doing it but actually in 94 they were talking about the ball was juiced that was a big conversation right. is the ball juiced right um yeah so no, steroids weren't really on anyone's radar so when uh yeah when that book came out it was just like oh my gosh and then bonds what he was dealing with in 2007 going to court you know perjury charges people were people were guys baseball players in court in suits uh prison time we're talking about i mean it never happened but it was a possibility i'm like oh my gosh what is going on um that's when it got real and uh it was crazy yeah and this is uh and, and the sad thing is all that all those home runs was after the strike brought us back, brought the fans yep. back. Yep. And uh, then we find out it was all, um, he was all, and now that's a whole scandal. So the 90 was just a big scandal. I mean, it's terrible. It really was. It's, it's such, it was such a mess. I mean, and that's why when this thing starts, it starts out. I mean, it, we, it's, it's all about cheating in, yeah. uh, in, in, in this one, uh, you know, the cork bat, the, the steroids. Um, you you brought you bring up the the perjury and that that testimony when they trot out what was it Bonds and Sosa and McGuire yeah. and Palmero and everybody and you got you know was it McGuire who's like I'm not here to talk about the past yeah not here to and, talk about the past Sammy Sosa's got his translator Sammy Sosa all of a sudden can't speak English That's anymore weird. like the whole thing was such a Palmero oh, such a show well, I tell you this wagging the finger I've never done steroids yeah. and then a week later he tests positive yes. for steroids <laughs> oh, God it's just such a mess like if somebody maybe just been honest uh, you know may, maybe maybe we would look back on them differently I mean we're gonna have. The baseball Hall of Fame is going to have one hell of a decision when Alex Rodriguez is up. I oh, mean, that are they? And gonna, you know, uh, somebody else, the Red Sox, um, Ortiz, Poppy. 
he he apparently was on a failed steroid list or, or something that, uh, that, was. that wasn't supposed yep. to go public. H how do you put him in if you don't put Bonds in? Yep, exactly. Bonds, I mean, Bonds, I know Bonds did steroids. I'm not in denial, but yep. he didn't fail a test. Yeah, <laughs> he was he was he was much more careful about it. It's a yeah. great. I mean, it's a great point, and that's where it's. I, I'm going to get to the point here. I mean, now now I think they only have one more year of eligibility, but I'm going to get to the point where I'm like, you know what? I know what they did. We all know what the error was. Yeah. So I, I hate to say it. It's going to piss off a lot of people because when this book came out and when I heard about steroids, I was so mad and I, I never wanted to see the, or hear from these guys again, but I'm kind of getting to the point with age where I'm like, you know what? If they're in, I'm not going to care. I'm not going to cry about it. If yeah. they, if, if Boz gets in, if Clemens gets in, if Manny Ramirez is in, if Ortiz is in, if A-Rod is in, I'm not going to cry about it because we already have guys in there that have, uh, that, that did Hall of Fame. We have cheaters in the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame is not this sacred playground that everybody no. wants to romanticize that it is. It's the greatest baseball players of an era. And this was the steroid era. It's, and, it, and it, it's again, with Bonds and Clemens being clear Hall of Famers. If they never touch steroids, I, I just don't think. And like you said, cheaters are already in there. Um, yeah, we got yeah. spitballers and just everything in there. And yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm absolutely uh, with you. But it's no almost thing. like we got to get. We it's almost like we got to get far enough away to where the technology that they use to cheat is no longer looked at yeah. as this like. The, the, the secret, uh, you know, uh, like like no one's ever heard of it, like futuristic way of cheating, right? Like we got to get to, a, there has to be a, a, another level of cheating. Yeah. Knocks what they did down a little bit. And all of a sudden we'll be like, eh, maybe it wasn't so bad because it wasn't X, you know, and yeah. X would be whatever the new cheating thing was like, you know, getting a bionic eye implanted or something like yeah. that. It's, I get yeah. You can get a bionic eye implanted, and it's not in the rule book to not do it. So yeah. I did it. It wasn't in the rule book. To, so like that's what I'm saying. Um, exactly. It's just, it, it, and I think it's crazy. Bud Selig goes to the local drugstore to try to find the Andro. <laughs> I love the thought of Bud Selig walking into the local CVS, be like, "Hey, you got any Andro? You know, we took it." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, anyway, this is, this is a crazy one. Uh, let's get into some of the historic teams because we are running long on this one, but it's a good conversation. Um, historic team from the 90s. Blue Jays win two titles in two trips. Yankees win three titles. The Braves get one title, but they go five times. They are considered the team of the 90s. Let's get to our time machine moments. Uh, time machine moment for anybody who's watching this for the first time is – if Eric or me could hop into our phone booth or DeLorean and head back to a moment in the 90s, what would we want to go uh, relive at this point? Because we've, we've lived it. What would we want to relive? Are th Let me go to you first, Eric. Are there any World Series moments? Is it the Ripken streak? Is it Bonds coming to San Francisco? What is your what is your time machine moment from uh, from the 90s? Oh man, nineties. Uh, there's a lot. I know there's a lot to choose from, and you, and you have a lot of memories now, probably flooding because again, like this, this is all time machine. Living. Yeah, time machine moment. Um, it's, it's just crazy. I, that's actually pretty tough. No, nineteen ninety three was. You want to just go back to nineteen ninety nine before we got to COVID and two thousand yeah. and all this other garbage? Just to any any pre COVID era, exactly. like whatever. A Tuesday, yeah. a Tuesday in July. I'm good. Well, if I could go back and uh, be able to actually witness something, I would love to see the Cal Ripken uh, game where, you know, obviously I wasn't there, but that was just an absolutely amazing moment right there. And it brought a lot of fans back. I, they never really had to bring me back. I, I was never gone. Um, I even watched the uh, replacement players. So I'm a, it was terrible. But uh, once uh, Cal Ripken was on that streak, that was just absolutely amazing. And, and I still don't understand how he did that. That's like non-human. Yep. It's yep. just insane. I don't think Cal Ripken's human. So uh, that's the yep. only thing I can say about that. Yep. Uh, the mine, it would be the Joe Carter home run, you know, when, oh, that, when, yeah. when that happened. Yeah. Being a Jays fan, when that happened, I was 12 or around there. So I would want to just go relive that over and over again. That was amazing. Wow. That was the, the, the peak of being a blue Jays fan. Uh, that's one of the greatest moments in world series history. You can maybe argue is the greatest moment. Uh, so I would go, I would go with Carter. Let me get yeah, it. I watched that game. That was that was nuts. That was crazy. Um, 
What a hit. What a, what a home run right there. Yeah, that was that was pretty crazy. Let's get to the do-over. Now, this is a tricky one. What would you do over? I think it's really there's just two, unless unless you can think of anything else. The do-over <laughs> moment. Is it steroids or the strike, or do you have anything else that you might want to yeah. might want to do no, over? No, those are the two main. I mean, I do have other do-overs, like the Giants not making the playoffs in 93 by one right. game. They won 103 right. games. But I will – Keep that as it is, especially knowing the Giants are going to win three World Series later. And instead, we got to get rid. Oh man, that is tough. That is tough. Um, I don't even. That, that's almost impossible. You, that you, want, you want me to go first? You can think about it some more. I'll. I'll, I'll, I'll I think I'm leaning towards the steroids because yeah, I mean that that strike is absolutely awful. They stopped playing. They didn't have a World Series, but. The, what the steroids, it, 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 that, was, that was one year it was over with, and now everything's fine. But the steroids, we're still, that is still affecting us with, with the Hall of Fame and yep. with the statistics, and it just ruined everything. At least the strike was, it happened, and it was over, and we can move on. So I guess we do over the steroids, and nobody does steroids. I'm with you. I agree. It's steroids. I think that if we could have the numbers be clean, have 61 still be 61 or maybe it's 63 yeah. uh i would do i would i would get rid of steroids because that just it 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 puts so many numbers in this you know comical out of reach spot that now the number we're like do we care about this number do we care about 73 no one's gonna get yeah. there again not until they not not unless they play 200 games in a season or yeah. you know start counting spring training stats towards the regular season, like no one's ever going to get to that number again. It, so it ruined, uh, ruined a lot of numbers. And yes, we have so many players not in the Hall of Fame now that probably could have gotten there anyway. Clemens probably would have made it. Uh, Bonds, would, for sure. Manning yeah. probably could have made it. He was an amazing hitter. Uh, so yeah, I would go. I'm going to go with steroids too. Let's do socially speaking. For anybody catching this for the first time, socially speaking, what – player if social media was a thing back then if you had mm -hmm. a twitter or facebook or instagram or, or or whatever snapchat uh you know what would you who would you want to follow so i have some names if you think of anybody else throw it out there but some okay, of the nominees probably could, say be, who I'm thinking of. could be rob dibble john oh. rocker ricky henderson i think jose Canseco. yeah he's right now a funny follow he's yeah. ridiculous <laughs> right now i can only imagine when he was younger or, you know, I've got Lenny Dykstra on here too. Who would be now John Rocker might be controversial because he was yeah. he was a he was a jerk. Um John, and, and, Rocker, and, and, and racist. Yeah. John Rocker was awful, but he might have been uh you know at least funny to sort of follow from a distance. Well, what do you think? Uh you know, and we heard Rob Dibble, he you know, he's he's been on uh, he had he was on the Dave Patrick show for a while. Pretty animated guy. Ricky loves himself. Some Ricky. He was. He had a, a ton of quotes. He was fantastic. What do you What do you like with socially speaking? Um. I, well, when you said that, I, I Jose Canseco came right to mind because, like yeah. you said, he's a good follow now. Would love to follow him then. I think he would do some trash talk and he might expose some people, like he eventually did in the book. Maybe not about steroids, but about whatever. Just uh, I think he'd be a fun fun follow right there. Um, Ricky Henderson's probably a, a, a close second because yeah, he'll say some crazy things as well. I'm going to go with, I think I'm going to go with, with Ricky because I think, I think he would have just been, uh, he would have been a great follow. He was very yeah. arrogant, but he could back it up. Jose Canseco was just a, a, a goofball. Ricky <laughs> was, Ricky was great, you know, um, and he was, he was very confident. So I would have gone with Ricky, you know, a guy like Rocker or Dykstra. I think they just would have been jerks. Just crazy, guys. Um, yeah. yeah, just 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 spouting off nonsense. Probably getting in trouble. They would have been like Aubrey Huff today, you know. And, yeah, and, and yeah. Would have they been might. Like, yeah, what it turned you off? What it turned you off? Unless that's your speed. Unless that's your speed on social media. Uh, you like to hate scroll or no or whatever. You know, I think I think you know maybe Rocker and Dykstra would have been right up there. But I'm going to go with Ricky because I think he probably would have been fun. I think he probably would have called some people out. I think he would have been a good follow. Uh, yeah, a lot. A lot in this one. Anything, anything else that you've got before we before we wrap up here? Oh um, no, no. I, I, let's see. I, did I write any notes? Yeah, McGuire, man. I, you know they they, made, they threw some stats out here that just threw my that blew my mind. They said he was hitting a home run every nine at bats. I mean that that just blew my mind. Yeah. Like, yeah. Every nine at bats. 
That's like every game. That's like every other game. He's gonna he's gonna go deep. I mean, that's yep. insane. But uh, no, I don't have a whole lot else. Yeah, the Yankees got back on track this decade. You know, they got yeah. uh, a good homegrown team with some veterans in '96, and then they they and, just uh, sort of built on that and and oh. got a, had a nice run. Also, uh, Sosa, yeah, let's not uh, – people forget how many home runs he hit. People need to look that up. He was at 60-plus three times or something. I yeah. know he was taking steroids, you know I mean? But that's absolutely insane. Yeah, Sosa went Sosa went off for a period there. And he was so beloved, right? Yeah. And you think back to that time. Everybody loved Sammy Sosa with yeah. that little – you know, that thing that he did when he hit a home run and all that other stuff. Yeah. Like everybody – he was he was basically Mr. Cub 2.0. Until the whole steroid thing brought him down, and he's the least, the least kind of talked about as far as who should get in. Nobody says Sosa should get in. It's always yep. you know Bonds, uh, McGuire, Clemens. Um, we hear those guys, but nobody Sosa don't even get any votes. He's barely hanging on to uh, it, it, you know. It's kind of it's weird true. because he he was he hit more home runs than any of them for, throughout that time. That's a good point. That is interesting. To, to why is he not? Why is he not brought up? I mean, I didn't even bring him up earlier when I'm talking about let, yeah. let the guys in. I, di- I didn't say Sammy. You know, I said I Roger. I said McGuire. I said Boz, and that's it. Like, I didn't even think about Sammy Sosa. So that's I a think good point. I don't think know. That, I think they think that he didn't have that much talent, and it was just all steroids because he was, you know, it was, it was uh, average okay with the Rangers, and then he yep. – during the steroid era, he becomes just an absolute monster. So – I think that that must be why, because obviously guys like Bonds and McGuire, they were they were going to be great regardless. But I don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't know. I don't think steroids can make you that that good. I mean, he had to have some talent. <laughs> yeah, I think. He, I mean, without steroids, he was probably like a twenty homer guy. Yeah, you know, maybe thirty homer guy, and then he ballooned up to a fifty and sixty homer guy. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, that that's a that's a great a great thought there. Uh, you know, why is Sammy? Just not given any any consideration. He had twenty four hundred hits. Not like he only hit home runs. And uh, how many career home runs he hit? Six hundred plus. I mean, six oh nine. Six oh nine. Yep. I mean, yeah, fascinating. fascinating. But he's not getting in. Uh, I mean, if, if but uh, that's where we're at. I mean, even Canseco almost hit five hundred home runs. So, you right. know, I mean, right. if they really wanted to just go by the stats. All those dudes would be in. Yep. Yep, that's a good point. That's a good point. I'm not saying you should just go by the stats. I think you should take steroids into consideration, and that should be a knock, a big knock on you. But still, you know, if you're a Bonds or if you're a, a Clemens, or, you know, I think you should get in. Yeah, there's a few guys. There's a few guys. I wouldn't put Canseco in, but if you went, you know, if you took over a category, right? Like yeah. Bond, Bonds is a home run champ. Uh, Clemens. What is Clemens? I know Clemens has a couple of uh, statistical categories that he yeah that he took over. Well, um, he's got two twenty strikeout games. I know. That. Yeah. What what is he? He's got. So he's got three hundred and fifty four wins. He's got over four thousand. Uh, he's got over four thousand strikeouts. I mean, that's big. You know, if you had two hundred and ninety, you know, wins and and. You know, maybe twenty eight hundred strikeouts, right? Like you just missed the marks, and and that's where steroids got you. Then I'd say no. Um, I mean, but like you said, I mean, Clemens was a three time Cy Young Award winner before he went to Toronto, and that's when everybody kind of attributes his his this, the the starting of his steroid use was yeah. when he went to Toronto at the age of thirty four and ninety seven. His career started over again, but he had three Cy Youngs and an MVP. Yeah, before that. So he was he, he was, was great. He, he yeah. had a he had a Kofax stretch yeah. uh, where we give Kofax was great for five years and then he was either okay or bad for the rest of it. You know, Clemens had that before steroids. Yeah, it's fascinating. fascinating. All of this stuff is, is is fascinating to talk about. It is. It's, it's just crazy. Yeah, I think it was one of the craziest decades, and uh, yeah, it was one one we lived through. So um, it's, it's nuts. Okay. And we got Good. more. We got more. We still got the bottom of the tenth, and I don't know. I'm sure that gets. I don't know what. I think that gets even more into the steroids. So, yeah, yeah. I think we're going to dive a little bit deeper into Barry in the bottom of the tenth, if if memory serves me correct. So yeah, that's that's going to do it for the top of the tenth inning. So make sure y'all. Hit that thumbs up button and go check out Ball Cap Sports as well and subscribe over there. Appreciate all your support here. And uh, yeah, make sure you check this one out. This was, I actually personally, 
I li- I really enjoyed this uh, narrator a lot. I mean, I don't know if he was as good as the other one, but uh, he was really good. So just want to throw that out there too. And uh, t- check out if you all can check out the top of uh, the tenth inning. And we'll be back with the bottom of the 10th inning very, very soon. Thank you guys so much. Have a fantastic day. Put your thoughts down below. What do you guys think? Steroid era or um, which one are you going to get rid of? Steroid era or the strike? Let us know down below and we'll talk to you next time. See ya. When the Giants come to town, it's bye-bye, baby. Every time the chips are down, it's bye-bye, baby. History's in the making at Oracle Park.